Santos Apostolos, pita me Paolo Monde, Santos e vos fratres, orare pro me le dominum Deo nostro. Amen. Domine, exaudi, razzine, meiam. 
Dominus Fabiscum, Remus. Salus populi, ego sunt dicit Dominus, de qua cum e tebărat sinica noapte ad me exaudiem eos, ed ero ilorum Dominus in pere petru. Atenile popule meos legem meam inclinate arem vesem in vera va obrise mei. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritu, et Santo, si coderat in principio, et in nuc et sempre, et in secula, et secula, et in amin. Salus populi, ego sunt dicit Dominus, de qua cum et tibulat sinca mavid ad me exaudiam eos, et ero ilor Dominus in perpetu. Kyrie eleisa. Kyrie eleisa. Christe eleisa. Kyrie eleisa. Kyrie eleisa.
The epistle for today, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, is taken from the letter of the Apostle St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, who according to God is created in justice and holiness of truth. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak ye the truth, every man with his neighbor, for your members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your anger. Give not place to the devil, he that stole. Let him now steal no more, but rather let him labor, 
working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have something to give to him that suffereth need. And the Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a king who made a marriage for his son. And he sent his servants to call them that were invited to the marriage, and they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell them that were invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my beeves and fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come ye to the marriage. But they neglected and went their ways, one to his farm, and another to his merchandise. And the rest laid hand on his servants, and having treated them contumeliously, put them to death. But when the king had heard of it, he was angry. And sending his armies, he destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he saith to his servants, The marriage indeed is ready, but they that were invited were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find call to the marriage. And his servants going forth into the ways gathered together all that they found, both good and bad. And the marriage was filled with guests. And the king went in to see the guests, and he saw there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he saith to him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having on a wedding garment? But he was silent. Then the king said to the waiters, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the exterior darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. A couple of announcements. Note that this week we have the first Friday and the first Saturday. So I invite you to Sister Mass to make those communions of reparation to the sacred and immaculate hearts, respectively, to which such great promises of holy perseverance are attached. The rest of the schedule for this week is in the bulletin. Next Sunday is the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, the 7th of October. As every year, we have a procession of the Rosary. We do it between the two Masses so that next Sunday there will not be any catechism. Instead of catechism, we're going to say the rosary together. It starts at 9 o'clock. Be here on time by 9 o'clock. And we'll say the rosary. Everybody from both Masses together will process around the block. We know the power of the rosary. We pray it for the Church in such a state of crisis and for our country likewise. The Mass will follow at 9.30. Reminder for the children of the Eucharistic Crusade that I am very greedy for your September treasure sheets and I have the October newsletters that I am very willing to exchange for a September treasure sheet. The regular meeting of the Eucharistic Crusade will be next Saturday at 9.30. Reminder for the boys, we still have a couple of openings for the boys' camp that starts tomorrow. If anybody's interested, you can see me after Mass. Finally, about First Communion is coming up very quickly. So if your children need to be tested for their First Communions, make an appointment so that we can go ahead and do that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Bind his hands and his feet, and cast him out into the exterior darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The man who did not have on the wedding garment, symbolic of grace, 
who was condemned to the sufferings of eternal hellfire. It's not the only time on which our divine Savior spoke of this horrifying thought. Many times he spoke of it. Take, for example, when he praised the centurion for his great faith, the centurion he said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. Just say the word, and my servant shall be healed. And he was. And Jesus says to that centurion, I have not found so much great faith in Israel. And many of you shall come from the east and west and sit in the kingdom of heaven with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But many of the children of the kingdom shall be cast out to unquenchable fire, whereas weeping and gnashing of teeth Remember also the parable of the cockle and the wheat. How they would be separated at the end of the world and the cockle would be burned. So it is these who have caused scandal and have done evil will be gathered together and cast into the outer darkness where they'll be cast into unquenchable fire to burn. Or remember the time in the Gospel where our Divine Saviour says, don't be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot harm the soul. I tell you, you must fear. He can cast body and soul into unquenchable fire. Remember the time he said, it's better for a man to suffer the loss of a hand or a leg and to go maimed into heaven and then with two hands or two legs to suffer unquenchable fire in hell. Many times our divine Savior spoke about this mystery of eternal damnation, hell. Horrible thought, doctrine of our faith that we don't want to think about that we all much prefer would never exist. That many people refuse to accept. It is used by the enemies of the faith as an attack against the church. But yet, it is a doctrine of our faith to find that hell exists, that it is eternal, that the souls of those who die unrepentant in their mortal sins go there. And they will suffer there forever. And the punishments will depend upon the gravity of their sins. And there is a fire, a real fire, which is the instrument of God's punishment for the damned. Would that we didn't have to believe in this article of our faith. Why is it that people don't want to believe in it? People don't want to believe in the punishments of hell because they have lost the sense of the supernatural, eternity, everlasting life, the sufferings of hell. The sense of the supernatural. is everlasting life and the punishments of hell. People have lost the sense of moral responsibility that my decisions and my actions upon this life will have eternal consequences that I have in the short time of this earthly existence to merit eternity or damnation. People have lost the sense of that dignity that God has given us making us in his image and likeness with free will, determining by our cooperation with grace our eternity. And the existence of hell is a media consequence of the existence of free will by which a man decides for himself how he wants to live, what is he going to do with God's grace? 
How is it going to correspond with the mystery of the incarnation and the redemption? The thought of suffering forever and ever and ever. The eternity of hell is one which is most repulsive. Now if God is good, surely he can find a way out of that to save souls that don't have to go to hell. If God really loves us, if God really is merciful, surely he can find a way out of that. The horror is the eternity of hell. Because if there were a way out of it, if the souls there could one day escape and go to heaven and be with God, then there would be hope. Then there would be something to look forward to. But there is no hope. Why not? We speak about eternal damnation as being a necessary consequence of the justice of God. God who is all just because he's all good and justice is a part of goodness. And consequently, we cannot escape from the consequences of our actions. And if we have separated ourselves from God, if we committed sin, which is an offense against the infinite almighty God, there must be an infinite consequence which has no end, the eternity of hell. But if it were just the justice of God, we could think that maybe God in his love could find a way out for the damned. But it's not just the justice of God which requires their eternal damnation. It's his goodness and it's his love. How did God love us? He so loved the world as to send his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him may not perish but have life everlasting. How did God love us? By taking the form of an infant but being one of us, taking a humble, weak, frail human nature upon himself. How did God love us? By living amongst us, by speaking with us, by talking to us, by performing miracles for us. How did God love us? By being insulted and reproached and spat upon for us. How did God love us? By carrying his cross, by climbing up on the cross, by suffering death and all manner of reproaches for us. This is how God loved us. In a very real manner did he love us. The one, the soul who refuses that love, who turns his back upon God's love, who refuses God's grace, who separates himself in this land of exile from the goodness of Almighty God, has despised that love. And there must be a consequence. The consequence is eternal damnation. Because you see, when a man dies, his soul is separated from his body. His soul is fixed in the state in which it falls. The house of its eternity is the state of the soul when separated from its body. It cannot change. Because our human soul is made for the body. It's separated from the body. It's fixed, determined. Cannot merit, cannot repent, cannot change. And if it's fixed in evil in stubbornness, in obstinacy, in rebellion, so it will remain for all eternity. And so it's the goodness and the love of God which separates the sinner from himself and requires the punishment and that it be eternal in the fires of hell. Could not, it could not be otherwise. So this mystery of eternal damnation is a necessary part of our faith. In fact, if there were not the sufferings of the damned in hell, why is it that Christ would have become man and died upon the cross? For what purpose? If it was not to save us from eternal damnation. Why is it the church would exist and have the sacraments of baptism, if not to save us from eternal damnation? Why is it that we must keep the commandments of God and the precepts of the church? If not, to save our souls from eternal damnation. It is a reality which we must take into account and live 
always with it in the back of our mind. Horrifying, but true. Repulsive, yes, but a part of God's plan for his creatures, part of his goodness, part of our free will, part of our responsibility for our own selves, which God in his goodness and the greatness of his mercy does not remove from us because that's how he's made us, with that great dignity of choosing for our own selves. You can see why it is then that Pope Pius XII in the 1950s pointed out that the church has the responsibility of preaching the reality of the punishments of hell. It's a duty to do so and it must not in any way diminish this reality. And he says, yeah, it's true that it's better to be motivated by the love of heaven and the love of God. But, or well, that might be a higher motive, it's not necessarily the most efficacious for our souls. The one which will withdraw us from sin is often the fear of the punishments which are reserved for the damned. So that if ever we lose the love of God, we'll never forget the fear of Almighty God and have offended him, which is the beginning of wisdom. It's for that reason that the Council of Trent defines and condemns with anathema everybody who denies the definition that the thought of the punishments of hell is very good for our soul. And that thought of the punishments of hell, which makes us turn to the mercy of God and begin his forgiveness, is holy. Not a bad thing at all, but a good thing. And it anathematizes those who deny it. Remember those three children of Fatima? Did the Blessed Virgin Mary give them a vision of heaven? No. She gave them a vision of hell. And showed them souls falling there into it in great numbers. And asked them to promote devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary to save souls from falling into hell. Nothing makes sense without the reality of this doctrine of our faith. St. John Bosco had a vision too. He was taken to the edge of the abyss of hell and saw some of his boys from his school falling into hell. And he saw why they were falling into hell, for what sins, and how they screamed and couldn't stop themselves as they fell into the abyss. Even such a great mystic as Saint Therese, Saint Teresa of Avila, mystical soul, wrote so much on the greatest mystical experiences she had. But in her autobiography, she describes as one of the most powerful experiences, the greatest grace she ever received was to see the place in hell that the devil had reserved for her. She saw the horror of that hot oven, that slimy place in which one couldn't move. And she says, when I think about it, it was years ago, the blood within my veins freezes with horror as I think of the sufferings that were reserved for me if I refuse God's grace. And she pointed out nothing was of greater help to her soul because it helped her understand that the sufferings of this earth, the difficulties and the pains and the insults are nothing. And she was so willing to bear them anymore so as to be assured of her eternal salvation. And that the thought of hell 
gives us a great zeal for the salvation of our own soul. And a great zeal for the salvation of other souls. To save them from hell. That's why the missionaries went all over the globe and lost their lives to save souls from eternal damnation. It gives us a great generosity in carrying our crosses and willingness to bear them. It is, then, of great benefit to our souls. And that's why the divine Savior speaks about it as a consequence of attempting to go to the marriage feast of heaven without the garment of grace. And so for us, let's follow that old adage. Look to the end. Look to eternity. It's heaven or hell, ultimately, that we must look for. That's a destiny. Where are we going to go? There's no other choice. We have the responsibility. God has given us the grace. He gives us the means. He gives us the sacraments. His mercy is endless. He's given us the passion of His only begotten Son. But what do we do with all of that? It depends upon us. We have to look to our it. And we find there the determination to live always in the grace of God. To never fall into mortal sin. To not expose ourselves to the occasions of sin. To live in constant gratitude for the graces and blessings God has given me, which preserve me from that horrifying lot of the great number who are called but not chosen because they refuse God's grace. Let's beg then the Blessed Virgin Mary, refuge of sinners, that she might obtain for us that grace of fidelity, cooperation, generosity. We might understand that this is a question of love. In hell, all is hatred. The damned hate one another. The evil spirits hate one another. If they would see our soul coming in there, they would take us and enslave us with hatred because we were baptized, we were members of Christ, and they hate us all the more. There's no place for any love there. That's why it's empty. There's no presence of God. Here we have the grace to be filled with his love, to use the opportunity to love and sacrifice for one another, to profit from the presence of Almighty God by his grace in our hearts, which is truly a preparation for heaven, to live that life of the Holy Trinity, which is a sharing in the life of God himself, the garment of grace, and to merit. Through the power of the precious blood of our divine Saviour, the reward that our divine and merciful Lord wants to give to the blessed. And that's the grace of holy perseverance in the faith that we'll pray for. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you. 
but it is it is for future that's a little bit a little bit Amen. 
vis koliko je predatorij moj Secola, secolo, 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 Pater Noste, Quies in Chenis, Sade Vigeto, Nomen Dum, Avenia Renum Dum, Via Bolundas to us, Sigun in Cello, et in Terra. Pane nostum quotidianum da nobis odie, et imite nobis de vita nostra, sicu de nos dimitimus de vitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Secola, secolo, Max Domini sit sempre Bobis, Seguitoris peccato mundi toni nobis pace. Domine, non sono di... 
dignos. Domine non sum dignos. Domine non sum dignos. Misericordia veste e omnipotenza, te usi di misti spiegati e veste, e spiegati al vostro di vita mediterranea. Indulgenza absoluta, e le misti e le peccatole, e veste contigo a vobis omnipotenza e misericordia dominus. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce quittolite peccata mundi, Domine non sum dignus surinda esse tecto meum, se tanto dic verbo esse nabito anima mea, Domine non sum dignus surinda esse tecto meum, se tanto dic verbo esse nabito anima mea, Domine non sum dignus surinda esse tecto meum, se tanto dic verbo es in abito anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei. In vita mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Christi, custodia te anima in tua mei vita, mei te anima mei. 
Papus Dominus Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mit. Papus Dominus Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mit. Papus Dominus Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami in vita mit. Amen. Papus Dominus Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mit. Papus Dominus Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mit. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita namami. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita namami. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodia tenemos tu ami vita mita.
Pues son tan bellos en Sacramento. Tu mandaste mandar tu tu acusto de rininis, utinan dirigando via y media, el custo de en las sistemas en esto. No menos pobres. Nos domini medicinales operación. Era nos es perversita de vos que me de la experiencia. El tu es en mi parte de remandatis. Per dominum nostrum en Jesús Cristo, un vinium tu. Qui te convivir el reino de la unidad de Espíritu Santo de Dios. Per omnia secola secolo om. Dominus vaviscum. Benedica de vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Dominus of Obiscum. Initium Santi Evangelii, secundum Ioannem. 
In principio era il verbo, il verbo era il tappo di Deo, il Deo era il verbo, o che era in principio, il tappo di Deo. Omni per i sono fatti, sono resti, i sono fatti, i miei sono nichi, qua fatto, i miei sono fatti, i vite era, i vite era, i luxo, i miei 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 luxo, i venit in testimonio, vo testimonio per libere de lumina, io domne scredere pe illum. Non era di le lux, era testimonio per libere de lumina, era lux vera che illumina, domne momine venite in un mondo. Il mondo era di mondo per i ipsum, fatti se si mondo se io non cagno vita. In propria venite sui, io non esce per un se. Con quella te ne esce per un se, io non 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 esce per un se, se vuoi fare una divide, se ne è un attissimo, e vero un carro fatto mesto, e da vita a vita in nobis e vita, ma se gloria a me, io se gloria a me, quasi unigeni, che a parte, meno grazie e verità, Tess.